hope everybody's uh, enjoying their lunch. I hate to uh, interrupt you, but we're going to go ahead and introduce our uh, speaker here in just a second. But I just want to say thank you to everybody uh, for coming out to Farm Ranch Days and keeping this tradition alive. 37 years, and I'm just, I'm just, it's awesome to see uh, and, and amongst all the struggles we've had this last year to see everybody here. It's, it's just awesome. So thank you for being here for that. And I also want to say thank you to the cattle women, another year serving us uh, uh, meals at Farm and Ranch Days. So uh, thank you for that. Um, we, uh, the cattle women did, uh, there are, uh, you guys should have your raffle tickets. Um, so go ahead and take them out. Uh, there's a couple bundles of cattle women uh, napkins that we're going to hand out. We'll have our speaker, uh, Peg, go ahead and draw us a few of those. So take those out. And then after that, uh, we also have a um, NOAA radio to give to when it's That's okay. So, for the first one, for the napkins, number 124 9828. Anybody win? 124 Okay. 124 Oh, we got a winner in the back. It's like Rowdy Anderson. The next one we have number one two four nine eight zero eight. One two four nine eight zero eight. Going once. All right. We'll draw another one. Number one two four nine eight two one. Oh, right there. You go. Awesome. Okay, so we got one more that we're going to draw for. This is the NOAA weather alert radio. And the number on this is number 1249793. 9793. recognize we've got Pam Uleen from Senator Barraza's office here today with us and yes round of applause for Pam we appreciate her being there and I also received a message from uh, Jennifer Fernandez I think um, from Senator Lummis or Congresswoman Lummis's uh, Senator Lummis's uh, office. She was supposed to be here, but she couldn't make it, unfortunately. Um, and uh, so, but uh, anyway, so we, we appreciate everybody being here. I'm going to go ahead and introduce our speaker for today. Um, she's with us. It's, it's Peggy Desenfons. Did I say that right? Sokol. Oh, Peggy Desenfans? Des okay. She's here from Torrington. She's been, her and her husband, Greg, uh, are uh, they're, they're ranchers outside of Torrington. Greg's a fourth generation rancher, and Peg is a relatively newcomer to the business. So she's um, gonna give a positive spin on uh, being a part of the ag industry, and, and uh, really excited to hear what you have to say. Thanks for being with us, Peg, and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Yes, Denson Thanks. that's quite a name, isn't it? And, and if you're French, it's Des Enfants. 
You know, uh, we didn't think that would fly in Wyoming, and so we um, say a Desson fans. And like like you said, Greg is fourth generation in Goshen County. We're happy to be there. Um, we have been married 43 years. We're on our way to 44. So thank you for that. And um, today. Greg and I have been to some amazing sessions this morning. We have learned a ton. Actually, we're on a date, and you guys are on the date with us. We never leave the ranch, and that is a true statement. I don't know how many years it's been since we have not chored in the morning, and I said, Greg, come with me, and um, he did, and uh, we had a nephew do our chores, and so he took me out for lunch. Thank you for this lunch. He picked up some of the free items in the other building, and he gave them to me. I think they're my valentine. And um, and we get to, get to be on a trip back home, so I'm tickled to death that he's here. We learned some amazing things this morning about the industry, and aren't we glad how our industry progresses? New things, new things all the time, coming up, changing. The thing I want to talk to you guys about today is something that I hope if I were to come back in 10 years, we could say that it hadn't changed. So I am not smart enough to talk to you about anything that I heard this morning. I'm not educated in those things. I am educated by life in what I have lived, and that's kind of what I want to talk to you about today. And to get to the crux of the matter, you have to hear a bit about Greg's and my story. Greg, as you know, fourth generation rancher. I was raised a city girl in the metropolis of Lingle, Wyoming. I know, I know. A block off of Main Street. I could look out my folks' window, and there is the highway heading to Lusk. I could see people 24-7. The city girl meets the rancher guy. Now, this is what attracted me to Greg in the 70s, and you people that are of our generation will understand. He wore brown plaid polyester bell bottoms with his cowboy boots. Ow! If that just doesn't set your heart to thumping, what will? And um, during that time, lingual girls really did not date Torrington boys. The lingual would, people would look at you and say, well, what's the matter with our guys? Well, not me. I went 10 miles down to the road because I saw Greg Dustin pants. And actually, Greg and I met in 4-H. God bless America for 4-H. I am not even kidding you. I love the program. I love what it teaches. I love the values of it. I love everything about it. But I really love the fact that I met my sweetheart there. And here's the cool thing. You wouldn't, I don't know if they even still do stuff like this. We were in a clogging club. And by clogging, I mean that kind. You know, where your feet moved and, and your body didn't. And our kids and our grandkids said, you did what? And why did you do that? I don't know why or what we did, but it was awesome. And I learned to clog because Greg was clogging. And so, I mean, what's not to love about that? So I fell in love with Greg. We dated in high school. We went to two years of college. And then we got married. June 11, 1977. Picture my man in polyester, pale green, for our um, wedding, you know, that polyester thing. I know, I know, can you feel it? You can, you can visualize it, actually. I know you did. And you know what? Uh, about a week later, I felt like I had died and not gone to heaven. You see, um, I knew the head of a cow, and I knew the tail of a cow, and that is as much about agriculture as I knew. Now, I knew a little teensy bit about um, uh, a crop, that kind of thing. My dad was the head parts man for Rose Brothers in the day when people all over the United States flew into Lingle in their little planes and landed on the cemetery road to pick up parts from my dad at Rose Brothers. So I knew that certain times of year, my dad was really busy. That's what I knew about agriculture. You know, I knew a little bit about the farming thing. Ranching was foreign to me. So we moved to our new home, 27 miles, 25 miles north of Torrington, 
two and a quarter east, road 118, by the way, in case you ever want to stop for coffee. And we are just off of the Nebraska line. We're in the flats. You can see forever. People would kill for the view that we have, and I hated it. Now, it would surprise you that I am a social person. I love to visit. I love to have a cup of coffee. I was raised in a home with a rotating door. There were people in my home all the time for that kind of thing. And I moved to the country, and there were no people. And Greg was gone a lot, and, and, and it, was, it was terrible. I hated it. And right off the bat, I, I formed an opinion of agriculture that wasn't good. I didn't like it. Now, some of you might say, well, did you not know before you married him what you were getting into? I, number one, I didn't. And number two, I didn't care. Remember, I was in love with the guy with the polyester pants. That's just the way it goes. I don't care what he did, but that's the way it went. So I moved into a foreign country, Prairie Center, Wyoming. That's, if you hear that, that's, that's my people out there. I uh, moved into a country that spoke a foreign language. Now, if you get nothing out of this today, you might tell your sweetheart when you go home, I'm so glad that Greg has to put up with her and I don't. Okay? Because you're not going to probably believe some of the things that I did not know that you were born knowing. So the language was one of them. Greg would say to me, we're going to put the open cows through that gate. Are their eyes open? Are their mouths open? What part of them is open? You know, it was a language barrier we had. In the pasture, he would say to me, watch for the bull holes. And I'm driving 90 down there and boom, hit a bull. And I didn't realize that's what that was because my gaze was on the bull on what I thought was the hole that I was supposed to be watching as I just bounced him off of the... I now had to learn what a bull hole was. Who knew that? Then he says to me one day, I want you to come out with me. We're going to test the bulls. Great. Will it be true, false? Well, is it a pop quiz? Do they know we're coming? I had no idea what, what that entailed. Now I know. Now I know. And I know with the bulls, when we're testing bulls, it's either pass or fail. <laughs> I got that down now. But I had no idea. It was, a, it was a language deal. And if you don't believe me on a language deal, you hand a bull catalog to someone who's never seen one, and have them open it up. Now, if that's not a foreign language, I don't know what is. So I still really kind of stink at that, but um, I'm getting better. So I'm in a foreign land, speaking a foreign language, and then I had to learn new customs of this foreign land. The first time he hauled a wet, slimy calf into my home, it was not a good day for me. It was not. I did not understand why there wasn't another place to put it. Now, then not only did he bring it into my home, he put it in my bathtub. And it was in my bathtub where I read and where there's bubbles. There was a calf in my bathtub. All of these customs in this foreign land. And I have to tell you, I was one crabby lady. I think I was a bear to live with. And I have since apologized for that, and bless his heart, he's hung in there with me. But you know, um, also there in this land, there were foreign seasons to me. I used to think that the seasons were winter, spring, summer, and fall. Little did I know, they're calving, branding, breeding, haying, weeding, feeding, and then you repeat, which actually just kind of coincides with those other, other uh, seasons. So. My life was different, and I didn't like it. God, in his infinite wisdom, allowed me to get pregnant six months after we were married. And um, we had our daughter, Dodie. And Dodie was four months old, and I was rocking her. And I puked on Greg's shoes. Sorry, I know you just ate. Sorry, that's part of it. And uh, I informed him. I said, we had this little conversation. I said, Greg, you know, let's talk about having another baby. And um, he said, when Dode's two, let's, let's think about that. And I said, no, I'm trying to tell you I'm pregnant now. <laughs> so our children are 13 months apart. So you see my um, education into agriculture um, 
didn't start until my kids were a little bit older because I was raising babies. So my, my introduction to the um, teaching of agriculture came as we taught our kids, and I was a part of that. Um, I wasn't a good mom for a while, and I wasn't a good wife, because when I tell you I wasn't appreciating what we did and where we lived, I really mean that. And one day, Greg and I were out. Um, we were gathering cattle. Why is it we have to gather them in the cold and in the dark? I, that's another one of those custom things. I, you know, I don't know. And we were out gathering. I'm thinking that we were getting ready to ship. And I wish I'd written the day down because it was a life-changing day for me. And we were out and we were gathering. It was fall. It was cold and it was frosty. And being the good wife that I was, I was grousing around. Okay, 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 I've got it, I'm coming. And we were out gathering, and all of a sudden the sun started to come up. Now, if you've been there, you know what it looks like. The sun came up on a frosty Wyoming morning, frost all over the pasture, all over the weeds, and what does it look like? It looks like diamonds, doesn't it? And I saw those diamonds that day, and for some reason, God spoke to my heart good and strong, and he said, hey, look at what you have been missing while you have been grousing around. There have been diamonds standing right in front of you, and you have been missing them. Changed my life that day. And uh, so this is happening to me. I'm processing this thought while I'm trying to be gathering cattle, and I stop, which doesn't please my husband that much. And I'm sitting there having this moment while he's going, come on, come on, come on, and I'm, I'm sitting there, and here he comes, he gets up there, and he goes, what are you doing? And I said, but there's diamonds, Greg, there's diamonds. And he said, could we talk about this later? I said, sure to gather the cattle, you know, and all that kind of stuff, but that day changed my life. I became a better mom, not overnight. I became a better wife, not overnight. You know, I was, I was very busy with two kids 13 months apart, and my days with them were not always fun, and I learned to look for the diamonds in those days with my kids. I am not a Pollyanna um, bubble um, uh, uh, what am I trying to say, uh, person. Not everything is not always good. But I want us to know and remember today, life is hard, but God is extremely good. And there are diamonds everywhere that we look. So let me give you a few examples of um, things that Greg and I have gone through that we've been able to find diamonds. We, um, in Prairie Center, five years ago, had a 25,000 acre wildfire. You may be knew it as the auctioner fire. And Greg and I are, are neighbors with the auctioners. Hot rascal. Auctioners lost over 100 head of cattle that day. And we fought that fire long and hard as Greg and I are on the fire department there. Greg and I took a stand on uh, Rustin Ross home. The fire was coming. We had a tanker that stayed with us. And um, it was very doubtful that we could save that home that day. And we threw up a one-second prayer, and it sounded like this, God help us. <laughs> and that was all there was time for. And um, as this fire came, and Rustin had done a really, really, really good job of mowing. So I think they had a, a, a fire thing that said, you know, keep mowed around your place. Rustin had done a really good job of that. And when the fire got to his fence, it was as, it as if it took a breath and we were able to get a jump on it, and we were able to save his home. We fought long and hard that day with many, many other people, and as we made our way down to the auctioner, homes which were saved, Greg said to me, he said, I need some ibuprofen, and trust me, I keep a well-stocked truck, that's just who I am, and I reached for the ibuprofen, and then it was that I realized that everything in the front of our fire truck was melted together, everything that tells you how hot it was. And we crawled out of the truck at auctioners, and I tell you what, as the adrenaline leaves you, you get pretty doggone tired, don't you? If you've been there, you know. You get pretty doggone tired. And we crawled out of the truck, and who was there 
but some of the ladies from Niobrara County, and what did they have with them? They had eye wash, they had ibuprofen, they had a cold drink. Now, let me tell you, the situation didn't change. Just as it didn't change, my situation didn't change the day that I found the diamonds. I still lived in the foreign country, but my attitude changed. My situation didn't change the day of the fire. It was a terrible day. But man, there were diamonds and diamonds and diamonds that were uncovered that day that you would, they were maybe soot covered, but they were there. Not one life was lost. Very, very close. Our friend Rodney was in the hospital for weeks and months and actually a year ago had his leg amputated from injury from that fire, but his life was spared. Diamond after diamond after diamond. So we've been through things like that. I worked in the Niagara County Extension Office when the flood came through. Whew, that was a doozer. And I saw people from all over the United States come into Lusk and help those guys. The situation didn't change. They were in the middle of a terrible, terrible thing. But look at the diamonds that they found everywhere. Their diamonds were waterlogged, not charred. So let me tell you about a day in my life, and I think you will, I think you're gonna, I think you're learning and you're gonna find the diamonds. I wrote this about my dad. The question was asked before branding, Peg, do you think I can pull the rope? My dad had pulled the rope at our sweet pen for years, and he knew the answer before he asked me, but he asked it anyway. And I said, Dad, I, don't, I know you can't pull it for all the cows, but for a few, I know you'll do great. You come out, and we will give it a go. We were down to the wire on the cows. To be exact, there were three cows left, and still no dad. I finally saw him driving slowly down the hill, as he approached our crew, they came to a standstill. He drove his car through the calving lot. He parked with great difficulty, and with great difficulty, he got out. He made his way to the rope, not an easy task. On this particular day, my dad was 93. Tears were streaming down dad's face, and as well as mine. He pulled that rope, and in those three cows came calm one at a time. Dad's tears weren't tears of sadness for what he was no longer able to do, but they were tears of thankfulness that he was able to pull the cow, the rope for three cows. His last remark as he left the corral was there. Now I've worked, I can eat. My dad loved to work and he loved to feel productive. And until the day he died, that was his attitude. It was the last time that my dad pulled the rope. It was, and I knew it was going to be. Were the diamonds in my day covered with tears that day? They were, but they were there. I could have lamented the fact that it would be the last time, but that wasn't the day to do that. The day was to find the joy that my dad was able to come out and do that. There are diamonds in everything that we do. Greg and I have um, learned to laugh at our house. Um, one of the, a lot actually, um, one of the things that you don't know about my husband Greg is he is profoundly deaf. Greg is a cochlear implant candidate and if we had a million dollars we could afford to do that, but, but we can't. So Greg is deaf, we deal with a disability and we laugh a lot because some of you will say, well my husband can't hear. Well my husband really can't hear. So we do a lot of these kind of things to get him where he needs to be in those kind of things. And I tell you what, we laugh a lot. And um, I was trying to get him awake a while back. He was sound asleep. Okay, he sleeps with a CPAP, which makes him look like Darth Vader. And so I, was, I had to wake him up because I had a cat sitting on my chest very happily showing me a mouse that it had caught. So he's asleep, I have a cat on my chest with a mouse and I'm trying to get, to get this point across to him. And let me tell you what, by the time I finally got him there, I was gonna kill him, I was gonna kill the cat. But it, I mean, it was a diamond studded event because who, who does that happen to? And can we not laugh at that kind of thing? So laughter is a diamond. Um, Greg and I are not cowboys. I have learned that since we have been together. I thought once I married a rancher, I was a cowgirl. 
That is not true. I am a rancher's wife. He is not a cowboy. We do everything on a four-wheeler because we're on the flat. So when it comes to doctoring, Greg and I, I, I drive the four-wheeler. Greg sits on the back, and he has a, uh, one of the hooks that looks like a big, long, you know, shepherd's hook. And we go through our cabs a couple times a day. They're, they're very aware of us and know that we do that. We, and that's the reason we do that. So we will go looking for the calf that needs doctored. And first thing I look at to see if they have stars on their tags. Now people, when we sell them, say, oh, are those your best calves that have the stars? No, the stars mean their mother will kill you when you grab them, so watch out for the stars. If it's one star, she might just bump you a little. If it's two, run. Three, she's going to kill you. That's just the way it's going to be. So the, before we doctor, we look to see if there's a tag with a star. So, okay, so we do this. We get the calf, da -da, and I'm driving. Greg steps up. He is awesome. He, get, he catches. Then it's my job. My job is to throw them. He has the hook. My job is to grab them, get them one foot, get them on the ground, then he takes over. My job is then to protect him. Well, 99.95% of the time, when I throw, we roll. So then, Greg is hollering because he thinks I can't hear. You get, hold them, do not let them up. I am rolling with said calf. He's got a, a you know, a, a needle. He's going, do not give me a shot. And then I get tickled. And we are, I am on the ground, and I have to tell you, I'm not much help at that particular time. But he is so good at doing this that he, he's able to doctor, we get up, but we have laughed a lot during that time. Did the situation change? We're just a mess, it's, care, it's terrible. But let me tell you, laughter helps. I hope you have laughter in your operation. I hope you have laughter in your home. If you don't, I hope you can find it. I laugh a little bit too easy sometimes. And one of the times I got myself into trouble, I was with Kelly Chichester. You might want to ask her about that little deal because it was totally, totally out of hand. Greg has put up with a lot. Greg is a diamond to me. I don't know how many men would be as patient as he has been with me over the years. I so love and appreciate that about him. Agriculture has taught me many, many things. It's taught me my strengths and my weaknesses. I can't back a trailer for nothing. I absolutely can't back a trailer for nothing. I know that. It's a weakness. Man, but I've got some strengths, though. If you want me to keep books on your calves, if you want me to be the girl that brings the cows up from the back, I am your girl. I know that I have strengths, and I know that I have weaknesses, and it has taught me that. I know that I am not in charge. We're in the middle of almost a drought, aren't we? Ah, man, it's not looking good. But you know, I, this is what I've learned. Nothing that we can do can change that. I can do every rain dance. I can stand on my head. It's not pretty, but I've tried. I can hang a rattlesnake on the fence and do all of those kind of things. And nothing that I can do can make it rain totally out of my hands. But I know that we're stewards of what we have. And that's a diamond to, to know that. That's a diamond to know that. I know um, what it is to educate children. I love now, now that I know more, I am able to help pass that along. Now, here's the reason I know we need to be doing that. Our granddaughter Brindley brought a friend out to our house, and you're not even gonna believe this story when I tell it to you. She brought a friend out, and when they bring a friend, I try to teach them one thing while they're there. And the wind was blowing loopity hoop, and I said to them, why am I so happy about the wind today? Because it was summer. My goal was to get them to think about a windmill pumping water. Okay, that's my goal. And the little friend who grew up in Lingle, agriculture town, okay, agriculture town, said to me, I know why, Peg. She said it brings the birds to the ground. I said, okay, and she said, if they're on the ground, the cows can catch them to eat them easier. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, so you think the cows eat the birds? She, she said, I know it, I already know that. And I said, have you ever seen a cow with feathers out of their mouth? And she said, no, but I, I know they do. And I said, no, they don't. 
And that just goes to show me and to show us that we need to be educating our young people in the ways of agriculture. You see, we can be a diamond in their life and they don't even know it. They're clueless. And I hope that, I hope that the cattle women and all the organizations, 4-H, all the organizations that teach and do will continue to do that. Our world needs us, people. Like I say, we can be, we can be a diamond to them. That's just all there is to it. My circumstances didn't change. They still haven't. Greg and I live in the home that he was brought up and raised in. He's not gone very far. I'm 30 miles from where I was raised. I've not gone very far. Circumstances haven't changed. Agriculture is hard, but I love every minute of it. I love what it has taught me. I love what we do. It's hard, but there are diamonds in everything that we do. You know, Valentine's Day is coming up. Gentlemen, I said that to prompt you to remember. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Ladies, you're welcome. I prompt. They have no excuse now for not knowing. What would it look like in our homes if we became diamond hunters? What would it look like no matter what our profession, whether we're in agriculture or we're not even close to an agriculture profession, if we became diamond hunters? You know, we live in a tough old world. We live in a world with problems. And if anybody argues with me on that deal, I'm just going to smack you. That's just all there is to it. We do. We do. But dog. Gone, we're missing some good stuff out there because we're so focused on the problems. What would it look like in our homes if we became diamond hunters? Men, what a gift that would be to your wives and your girlfriends. Ladies, what a gift that would be to our husbands and our boyfriends. If only I had been that way for my husband in the, in the younger days. I'm thankful he stuck it out with me. Um, what does it look like when we go into a store and we... Um, Tell a clerk, thank you for your time today. You see, not only are we looking for diamonds, we can be diamonds. I'm thankful for agriculture. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for what you do. And I will close with this. I write a column for the Troyton Telegram and for the Niobrara County paper. And this was a couple of weeks ago, and it's my hope for you. May the ice in your tanks be thin and the wind in your face be a gentle breeze, just enough to turn the windmill and to make a pump. May the gentle rains come and the hay and the grass grow knee high. May your calves be born healthy and, a, and strong in weather that's fit for all. May the snowdrifts be soft and the four-wheel drive in your truck work as it should. May the lightning always be accompanied by rain. May the cattle prices be enough to meet your needs. And may we realize the life we live is a blessing and each and every day is a gift. When the ice in the tanks is two feet deep, the wind is blowing, and the temperature is minus 24, may we realize that this is a short season and that this too shall pass. When the drifts are hard, the snow drifts are hard, and a shovel is the only way out, May we realize where our help comes from. When the calves are born in weather not fit for man nor beast, may we realize that the cattle are not ours, but his for us to care for as we do our very, very best. When the rains don't come and there is no hay, may we look to him for wisdom as to how to and what to do. And when we are nervous about the cattle markets, may we assess our needs and our wants and rejoice that our needs are always, always met. When rain doesn't come with the lightning, may we remember he has trained and prepared neighbors and friends who can help us. May the senior saints, that's what, that's what I am, a senior saint. I am not old. I am a senior saint, just like some of you here. May the senior saints gain new knowledge from the young. And we did that this morning. Thank you for the knowledge we gained this morning. May the young listen to the wisdom of their elders as they have lived and learned. May we put our trust in the one who gave his life for us, the one who's never surprised and who never sleeps and who never leaves us. May we turn from our thoughts that we are rancher tough and we can do it on our own. May we acknowledge that we see a tiny piece of the picture and he sees it all. And we start the day with Lord help us. We live in quite a year. We live in quite, quite a world. 
It's diamond filled. All we have to do is train ourselves to see them. I hope if I were to come back and speak with you in 10 years, nothing would have changed other than we've gotten better about it. We know the industry will change and we progress with that. But my thought is if we can become diamond hunters and if we can become diamonds ourselves, our world is gonna be a much better place. So I thank you and I leave you with that. Well, thank you, Peg. We really appreciate you being here. And Greg, thanks for coming, too. Um, that concludes our first day. I want to say thanks again for everybody to come or coming. Uh, we'll get started again at 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, we had lots of good programs today, but we've got a lot more good ones coming tomorrow. Uh, thanks again to the Cattle Women. Thanks again to uh, Farm Credit Services. They sponsored the, the uh, speaker today. Um, and uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. Drive safe going home, and thanks again.